Hey, what's up guys? This is KDK Kiel Dyken. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video review, uh, we're going to address several concerns, several questions that has been posed in the past few days. A number of you who have been using RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi 5 have been asking the question, how do you set up your shaders and import your borders for the sending light gun on the Raspberry Pi 5 using, using the Ether emulator? And first and foremost, let me tell you, it is a hassle. It's a pain in the butt. This is one of the things that I was really concerned about. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure you guys are fully informed about what you need to know if you plan on using your ascending light gun with PlayStation 2 emulation using the Ether emulator. All right, so we're logging into the Ether emulator right now. We have my PlayStation 2 set. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. We're gonna go up here to the top. Now, if you guys are familiar with the sending light gun using it on RetroPie, uh, pretty much all the systems kind of do this. It's incorporated using RetroArch. Or RetroArch is an overlaying emulator, set a system set up to import all of your controllers over, allows you to set up your light gun and everything and whatnot. Now keep in mind, there is no further development on the Ether emulator. However, that's not really the biggest issue here. So let's go ahead and pull it up. We're gonna go to tools and we wanna go over to, uh, let's take a look at controllers. All right, so this is where you would configure your sending light gun. Now, if I had mine hooked up right now, uh, I would make sure that it's already turned on in ports, making sure that the gun is fully active and then it would be recognized on RetroPie. Now keep in mind the Ether emulator is not talking to RetroArch. So that entire setup uh, scenario in terms of importing your borders and shaders over has a totally different concept on it. And I'm going to show you guys here. So if you were just connecting your buttons, uh, plugging, you know, using your trigger, configuring it for the emulator, this is typically where you would go either controller one, controller two, uh, USB keys, or you would set it up as GunCon if you were playing Time Crisis, and then you can kind of go ahead and configure everything that way. So uh, this is where your your setup would be. You could set it up as an HID mouse, and typically I think there's another option here too if you had it plugged in. But we don't have to worry about any of this. But the problem is with this is that Ether again does not talk to RetroArch. So I started brainstorming and figured, hmm. If I go to my settings, so let's go up here to, let's see, graphics. And actually, let me go ahead and back out here. I want to clear this up here so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, so we're back in. I'm going to go up to settings. We're going to go up to graphics. And again, this is the uh, control system for Ether. And again, keep in mind, it does not talk to RetroArch. So all the controllers here are set up individually. Uh, we're gonna go over to textures and replacements. Actually, it's not even this file. Uh, it would probably be, let's see here. All right, so it would more or less likely be under post processing. And typically this allows you to add in your additional shaders. The only problem is uh, some of these functions for this emulator is, is entirely built in. They're not independent of the emulator. So for example, if I was in a retro arc right now, I would be, be able to go in look at all of my shaders in an individual file. I can see the name, file name, and exactly where they are. These particular shaders are somewhere built into the emulator. I haven't actually uh, figured out where they are, but regardless of the point, this is all you can use. So if typically it would, if this was another emulator, it would say TV shader, and then it would give me the ability to access a certain file directory. And then I can go into that directory and then use that particular file or that border as a shader. So here it says none, scan line, diagonal, triangle, wave, uh, and lots CRT. Then of course here you have shade boost. This either lightens it up, turns up your brightness, your contrast or saturation. So typically this is where you would import your borders. 
So uh, unfortunately, um, as you guys have heard me mention here on this channel many times, is that there is no official send in light gun tutorial for RetroPie in terms of setting it up. And those are one of the things that I've been talking about uh, that we typically all the videos that you have seen have been hobbyists and community people. There has not been an official instruction tutorial. However, there is something on the wiki which kind of sends you through the method of how to set up a light gun using the PCSX, uh, the PCSX2 emulator. However, it's very tricky. It's for PC. Uh, is it doesn't necessarily pertain to ether, but be considering that this is pretty much a carbon copy emulator of that, that same process should work. Now there is another, uh, there is another folder here. This is for textures. This is more or less kind of what I'm talking about. However, if I did have additional textures typically, and I wanted to use them, let's say if this was sending borders, this is what it should look like. It should give me the ability to browse go in here and then maybe use that as an overall shader. However, we don't have that with the sin and borders. So I'm going to show you really quick. So I did a quick Google search. Uh, there's a YouTuber by the name of Johnny Ruse. And typically this should be the same type of install method uh, that you should use. If you guys want to go to his channel is Johnny Ruse. He has a thousand subscribers, 16,000 uh, views on this. And he takes you through the full setup process with the PC sx2 uh emulator and you know with all the things that i have to do the supreme team we're getting this to boot uh in addition to configuring the games just so they so that you can use these games uh this is a lot of work i'm not going to go through here you have to insert additional commands in here i'll just go ahead and play just a couple of minutes uh just indicating some of the hot spots but you have to go into the folder here. You would have to go into your win SCP, uh, remotely log in and edit this gsdx.fx and then your settings.i and i file. Type in some commands and pretty much this is how you would get it to work. This is a lot of time. I really don't see anybody really doing this just to be able to play a few games. I think PlayStation 2 only has about eight light gun games in total. But again, on top of everything else that needs to be done, most of you just want to jump in here and gameplay. This is extremely a lot of work, very time consuming just to get in here and game it. This process really needs to be simplified. But again, this is all we have to offer. As you can see here, you're going here to, uh, to commands, uh, typing in lines in the commands or typing in some additional scripts. And that would give you the ability uh, to use your sin and like it. Now there is another separate function uh, in order to get two guns working, but this is pretty much what you're dealing with if you want to get send in light gun capability on the Ether emulator for the Raspberry Pi 5. Now this also work uh, would typically be the same process if you're using the Orange Pi 5 and probably any other single board computer using this particular emulator. But again, this is a lot of work, especially if you're using a single board computer. It is not PC uh, with using x86. You will have to do a lot of configurations, not just for the gun, but for the game itself. This isn't going to be a simple plug and play scenario. A lot of these games for PlayStation 2 will work, but they're going to need a lot of tender and love and care. And like, as I've said before, it will test your skill set. Most of these people are just throwing ROMs in there and letting the board or the computer do its work, thinking it's optimized. But if you're running into a situation with PlayStation 2 games and they're not running correctly, uh, most of the time they, they do have the opportunity to run uh, because you got to optimize it. You got one emulator trying to emulate, in this case, 4,000 different games. Everything is not just going to be plug and play uh, compatible just from the start of it. So again here, uh, these are, are the options that you're pretty much working with being able to go in here and, uh, assign your different directories in order to use the sending borders. But again, guys, this is just a lot of work. Just wanted to kind of show you what, uh, to answer your question, because most of you have asked this, uh, question, how do you set up your sending light gun with the, uh, ether emulator on the raspberry Pi five? And that's pretty much what you're looking at. So the buttons will respond, but as far as getting the shaders and everything in there, you're, that's a totally different beast. So 
I don't know if some of you guys want to tinker around with it. Just wanted to give you guys my insights as to how this typically works. Uh, again, I have over 56 games in here. I've gone through about 800 different PlayStation uh, 2 games that do fully run on the Raspberry Pi 5. And of course, any other single board computer like the RK3588, Orange Pi, Rock Pi, uh, those will all work uh, pretty much just as well. But that's pretty much where we are, guys. Just wanted to give you the heads up uh, just in terms of what you're dealing with. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. It, it, it's it's a lot of work. And, you know, if you're planning on using light gun games, you want to get something, you know, kind of more simple and straightforward. I would use like a Gun 4IR or an 8E light gun or Wee Dolphin Bar, Aim Track, something that's infrared capa capable that doesn't require you to go through all these steps. Because, uh, again, I use my AE light gun that's infrared compatible. I put up my sensors and I was pretty much kind of set up and ready to go. So, I mean, I wish Sendin really had an easier way of doing this. And I know some of you are typically relying on, you know, Recall Box, Batacera, for example. Uh, they don't have PlayStation 2 emulation working on this. They do have it on PC, which uses a different emulator. But uh, this is what we got right now. Anyway, you guys have a great night. I will catch you guys later. Like and subscribe. Uh, please keep in mind, I got some special releases coming up before the end of the month. And I have some other reviews. So I'm trying right now to post maybe at least two to four videos a week uh, to keep you guys informed and up to date. So with that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace out. All have a great night. Bye-bye.